Welcome to a new in the mail, the most popular segment hosted here on the channel. I've got lots of interesting good and equally bad products piling up in my special mail bag bin, so let's take a look at them. And I'm going to start with an absolute garbage product, this uh, smartphone telephoto lens, which I thought is going to be great for attaching to my iPhone, which I'm using to shoot videos. And let's say use it at a meter away from the subject, but uh, be really zoomed in like when soldering on a PCB I don't want the tripod and the phone to be in my way so I got this 8x variant uh, because uh, there was also a 12x I believe I paid like uh, $5 shipped for this and this was probably the worst spent $5 in recent times this is absolute garbage all I can get is a blurry image and I've tried removing the uh, protective case on uh, my phone thinking that uh, this might not be the correct focal length because of that, but nope, it doesn't make, make any difference at all. And other users are reporting similar things in the product review. So please don't order this crap. I seriously don't understand what were they thinking. Why did they make this, package it and ship it? Next up, I got one of the, let's call it newer GPS modules from China. This is the this module is based on the ATGM336H, which presumably is the part number for the original uh, module from Zongke Microelectronics. But this particular module is branded as an AI Thinker GP-02, and it comes with an integrated uh, ceramic GPS antenna, so it's good to go. The SOC used inside this module is the AT6558, and it supports a variety of satellite navigation systems, including China's uh, Beidou satellite, a GPS in the uh, US, GLONASS in Russia, Galileo in the EU, uh, QZ at SS in Japan, and I think their main target is to replace Ublock's Max series with something that is roughly the same size, possibly same uh, package and pinout, but lower cost. And I thought I'd give this uh, module a try, keep it in my GPS modules bag, waiting uh, to be used in a GPS project. One mention though is that it doesn't necessarily mean this particular module that I got from AliExpress supports all of the uh, mentioned uh, satellite networks. This depends heavily on the variant of the chip used inside the module, because as the data sheet um, shows in this table, it can have different config levels and b based on that it will support different networks. So a link for this will be provided in the description of the video, but keep in mind that um, this particular module might only support like two networks and it might not be as energy efficient as a Ublox module. The sponsor of this video, PCBWay.com, is a professional PCB manufacturer with excellent quality and fast turnaround times. Right now, they're running their fifth annual PCB design contest, so if you have some PCB designs that you'd like to submit, why not do it for a chance to win one of the juicy cash prizes? You could also try them out for many of their other services like 3D printing, CNC machining, and manufacturing services in general. Check out their website, link below. Next up, I have a few different types of insulating washers. These red ones are M3 and M4 size paper type insulating washers, while the black ones are just plastic nylon insulating washers. And both of these can be great when you want to achieve some level of mechanical and electrical insulation when you have screws holding down a PCB and you might have some PCB tracks going too close to the screw hole, for example. I mean, if, if possible, such a thing should be avoided from the PCB layout stage as mounting hole footprints should have a keep out area corresponding to the size of the screw to be used. But if you end up with tracks in that space, one of these small insulating washers could save the day. Next up, I bought a, uh, another set of these uh, adhesive cable tie mounts and I've shown these uh, before. They have some adhesive backing and they are theoretically reusable because you can clip and unclip this uh, plastic belt. And because of that, they can be really handy for cable management. Not sure if this adhesive backing is really 3M original, it might not be, and the effect of that is that these might come off at some point. Not that 3M is bulletproof, I've had genuine 3M cable management mounts that come off after a couple of months, so it really depends on the surface type, how clean the surface was, uh, the actual strength of the adhesive, the temperature, uh, at which it is stored, so lots of variables. Next up, I have a couple of test clip sets, and this one comes with four millimeter banana jacks, and um, uh, J clips at the other end. And I tend to use these a lot for general purpose power supply output connections, like on my analog adjustable bench power supply. 
I always keep a set of these connected. It's just that those are DIY uh, with higher quality connectors. Now the banana jacks on these are not great quality because they are these sliding ring type which tend to uh, be problematic over time. The cable is PVC but it's kind of soft and nice so I would say these are usable uh, but of course not as nice as uh, some high quality uh, custom test clips that you would build yourself. But if you don't have the budget for that, these are still pretty much usable. The other type of test clip set includes these uh, USB type A to alligator clips in uh, both female and uh, male uh, variant. These can be uh, extremely useful for testing stuff like USB power supplies or when you want to power some USB device from a bench power supply, you can just use this uh, female USB connector. Quality is not great, but not terrible either. Probably usable up to one amp. Next up, I got a set of these uh, smaller waterproof cable glands. And these are M8 size and it's impossible to find these uh, locally. I think the smallest size they sell at the hardware stores here is like M16 or something like that. But most of the time I'm just trying to waterproof a smaller cable going into a box. So this M8 size seems like a perfect fit for that job. For example, I've recently built some custom industrial uh, boxes that were installed outdoors and the cables I had to pass through glands were like four to five millimeters thick. And obviously I could not get those to seal with the hardware store M16 glands, but something like this did the job just nice. And on the same topic, I got this uh, IP68 uh, waterproofing connector which can serve as a ceiling for a joint in your cables. Let's say you need to join two pieces of cable. Well, you can use one of these uh, pass-through um, clip connectors in the middle and uh, have everything perfectly sealed inside this. They make these in different sizes with different wire clips for two, three or five wires. They also make them in a T-shape uh, connector. And although I don't have an immediate uh, use for these, I figured uh, it would be useful to keep these in my uh, toolbox. At some point, I'm pretty sure I'm going to need something like this. And as a side note, looking back at all of the stuff that I purchased uh, a few years back, uh, I sometimes use that uh, in current days and it was a pretty good deal to get it at uh, those prices and keep it in my stash considering the current prices. Same as always, you'll find links for all of these products in the description below. Next up, I discovered the new type of uh, syringe booster and it's actually quite a simple mechanism but very effective at uh, squeezing out viscous stuff from a syringe and this includes solder paste, solder flux, various types of adhesives. So this thing comes delivered with a uh, syringe and some spare needles and you get this arrangement of a plastic lever with a long screw acting as the plunger. Now, this is obviously more effective than the more traditional booster that I have shown here before. With this, you would still need to push quite hard to get the paste to squeeze through a thin needle. Now, with this one, the uh, force is amplified, so it's easier to squeeze uh, solder paste, for example. However, the, the position you have holding this in your hand kind of find it harder to get accurate positioning because before I was holding it at like something like this and I got higher precision. Now I have to hold it something like, like this maybe and, and I don't get the, the same position, the same precision when dispensing the paste on a PCB pad. It certainly takes some practice and I find that I don't have the, the same, even with some practice I cannot achieve the same level of accuracy that I had before, but even so, I think I prefer this better because it just takes so much less force to actuate the syringe and in my hands don't hurt as much when I have to assemble a bigger board with lots of uh, connections. Another weakness of this is the rather thin plastic used in the construction. Like I would love for something like this to be machined out of aluminum and have this very nice solid hinge mechanism uh, that it would that would not wobble around like this one is. But then again, for something like that, you would have to pay like $30 and I would complain about it being too expensive. But just imagine how nice that would be and you would be getting probably lifetime usage out of something like that. Anyway, a link for this will be in the description below. I highly recommend you try it out. Next up, I ordered myself a few of these uh, dual coil latching small signal relays. 
Uh, these might be NEC Japan old stock or they could just be counterfeits. You never know when getting them from AliExpress. But in terms of uh, specs, the originals uh, are rated for one amp switching current on the contacts and they have two sets of coils, one for set and one, one for reset. You energize the set coil, you trigger the relay into closing the contacts and it's done. No more power usage. The relay is stable in that, that position. Need to open the contacts, you energize the reset coil and and then the contacts are open. It's done. No more power draw. The relay is once again stable. So this type of relay can be extremely useful in applications where you don't want to waste uh, any power or you don't want to keep those relay coils energized for long periods of time. They're also pretty small taking up very little space on your PCB with the obvious constraint of not being able to switch a lot of power through their tiny contacts. Next up I ordered some single cell LiPo batteries in a rather small format because I'm working on this uh, low power device so, so I wanted to experiment with different size batteries not that I would be using this uh, uh, Ali these AliExpress source batteries in the final product but still these are great for determining how the final package uh, will be looking what I wanted to mention is that I'm always amazed at uh, how little safety is considered when shipping these cells with airmail the customs declarations conveniently mentions USB line as the package contents cells are just wrapped in bubble wrap with no protection for short circuit like the wires are just hanging here uh, it's a good thing that they fold them one on each side though uh, but in my experience these are always shipped at max charge state so if something were to happen during shipping like a short circuit between these uh, these wires uh, it would be plenty of energy to start a fire in in this particular case because i have ordered the uh, batteries with the protection circuit included it's probably safer because this would cut out and it wouldn't let enough energy flowing through these wires to cause a wire maybe uh, but I have also gotten uh, cells that do not have the small protection PCB and they were shipped exactly in the same manner. Because of that, it's no wonder they, they tightened the shipping restrictions for uh, lithium polymer batteries over the years because people are shipping them like this. My next item is this MT8870 DTMF decoder board and this could potentially be useful in one of my long-term projects where... Uh, I would like my building intercom system, which is phone based, to be connected to my home assistant server so that I could handle incoming calls as well as sending the command for opening the main door through home assistant. Because then, instead of using an old analog phone as the interface for the intercom, I could have this modern tablet with a dashboard and touch screen. So, one option I'm exploring is a USB modem that would give me a way of interfacing with the telephone line in Linux, but this method involves messing with drivers and potentially not having support under Linux for that. The second method involves using some form of external module based on this MT8870 DTMF decoder, which would give me access to reading any DTMF codes on the line, but I would still have to implement the transmit side, side to be able to send codes. I also got a bunch of these 600 to 600 audio transformers, which I might need to interface to that phone line, but so far I haven't found the time to mess around with all of this. Maybe with winter coming up, spending more time indoors, I'll get a chance to fiddle with all of this. Until then, a link for these will be in the description below. Also related to this telephone line project, not knowing exactly if I'm going to need it or not, I got one of these KS0835F modules, which is a ring subscriber line interface circuit. And if you're like me, it's probably the first time you're hearing about this, but this module can basically generate this um, ring signal on an analog telephone line, as well as providing a, a MCU friendly interface to control this. And like I said, this stuff is all new to me, I don't know if I'm going to need it, but it was cheap enough to buy just to have it ready when I'm going to start tinkering with this whole telephone line project. Next, here's a nice way of adding a small PCB mount speaker without messing with wires and connectors. You can have something like this soldered directly to your PCB if you need some kind of sound feedback for your project. This is an 8 ohm, 0.5 watts rated speaker, but in terms of specs, that's about as much as you'll get for this. No datasheet, no frequency response curve or anything like that. So Please expect some pretty average results from this and you won't be disappointed. The size of this is 30 millimeters in diameter with 12 millimeters in height, uh, which is not bad, 
I could definitely make this fit in my project because the original idea for which I wanted to try something like this is to have an ESP32 smart door bell that would be uh, built into a uh, one DIN rail slot enclosure size so then I could install that into my electrical panel to replace the current dumb bell and no pun intended with a smart bell. One of the things that I would like to, to have is the ability to sometimes control the volume or completely turn off the doorbell circuit. It could be very easy to do that if I would have an ESP32 running the show and be integrated into my smart home system via Home Assistant. But once again, I'm hoping winter will give me a chance to uh, tinker with that project. And this is the uh, last item in uh, today's video. Uh, this is an interesting PoE module. So PoE stands for Power over Ethernet and there are various standards that define the specs. One of these is 802.3AF, but I think uh, you can be compatible with this standard in both active and passive way. I haven't read too much of this, but what this module with the part number RT9400 can do for you is to extract power from a uh, PoE line obviously one that supports the 802.3AF standard and this particular version that I have here will negotiate and output an isolated 12 volt rail with the help, with the help of this uh, transformer uh, up to a maximum of 12 watts so that would be one amp but there are also variants that can output 3.3 volt, 5 volt or 24 volts for example the negotiation part is particularly important because the master on the line will not output the full power unless there is a handshake happening. And according to the manufacturer datasheet, in case you uh, change your mind after the purchase, you can also adjust the output of the output voltage of this by changing some resistors on the module, although I'm not sure how well that would play in with the whole DC to DC converter thing. But all in all, I would say this is a pretty neat solution for adding PoE input power to your project. That was all for today. I hope it was interesting to watch. Let me know in the comments below if you ordered any of these items. Same as always, links for all of the products shown in this video will be placed in the description below the video, so do check them out. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget you can support the channel on Patreon with as little as $1 per month, or you can simply hit that like button, which is free but helps a lot. I'll be seeing you next week.